Well, they've spent two years on the front line of COVID doing long hours wrapped in plastic PPE. But today, nurses across New South Wales drew a line in the sand. Overworked and underpaid, they marched. Enough is enough. Stay down. No one wants their family member to die in a room by themselves, and that's what it's coming to at the moment. The system is broken. We want proper staffing ratios so we can look after our children effectively. We need their help. We can't keep going on like this. We're burnt out. We're all very angry. We are all just on a treadmill doing our best to survive. When the nurses are becoming the patients, it's really worrying for everybody. What do we want? We want it? What do we want A sea of scrubs down Macquarie Street. The angels of our healthcare system pushed to breaking point and begging the New South Wales government for help. In the crowd, Amy Helverson. After four years in the job, the registered nurse quit last month. Part of me is just so happy that it's over. I don't want to go back there. It was horrible. Amy says she could no longer act like everything was OK. We have the capacity. They aren't giving us the capability. And if we don't have the capability, they need to be honest with the public so we stop getting abused and screamed at and copying those frustrations of the government's failings. She marched with her friend and now former colleague Julie, an ICU nurse. Two years into a pandemic and they're saying it's fine, it's coping. We're saying we're not fine and we're, we're literally breaking point. There are so many nurses that are quitting. There are so many nurses that are just so fed up. Um, Amy quit because she just couldn't do it anymore. Shay Candish from the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association says they're asking for nurse to patient ratios to ease the burden on overworked staff. We want to see one nurse to four patients on medical and surgical wards, one nurse to three patients in emergency departments, and we want to see a staffing model that counts mothers and babies and all other specialties. In Victoria and in Queensland, they have ratios. ACT have just committed to giving ratios. We see nurses that live on those border towns take themselves interstate to work because the conditions are so much better and they're able to do the job that they so desperately want to do. From working head to toe in PPE all day, every day, to being denied meal breaks and pushed to work overtime, every nurse that showed up today had their own reason. Two years ago, I was having anxiety attacks. I was so busy, a man who was dying, I had to leave him for five hours without giving him any care. And I went home and it, it just destroyed me. I thought if we had more support, we could look after this man and that was the catalyst for me to say I've had enough. It's very hard. hard. It's very hard, you know, to leave our patients, you know, to not be able to care for them because they're, you know, when they're in need, but we're also in need. You know, we can't look after them properly if we don't look after ourselves. And patients think they deserve more too. I think the nurses definitely need, all need a medal and they certainly need more help even more so than the money. They need help to run the wards. No kids, no bus, no public sector cuts. New South Wales Health asked the Industrial Relations Commission to step in to stop this strike at the 11th hour and the IRC ordered the union immediately cease any industrial action. But as you can see, that order's been ignored. Nurses are clearly fed up with being pushed around by the government. Threatening us not to come out here is ridiculous. It's time you start listening and opening the dialogue. We need change. To me, that uh, further shows his disdain for our rights and for our conditions. New South Wales Health Minister Brad Hazard had this to say on 2GB Radio. And I'm disappointed because uh, I've spent a lot of time, a lot of time talking to the association to try and find some middle ground. And the advice from the ministry is it will cost another billion dollars just if we go down this permanent ratio issue. So it, nothing is small money in this and we have to work out how to carefully use taxpayers' dollars. But while the bean counters crunch the numbers, Dr Peter Baldwin from the Black Dog Institute says the mental health of our nurses is suffering. At Black Dog we've got an online mental health screening tool 
Um, in a typical year, we'd probably see around four to 5,000 people in the healthcare industry using that. A lot of those are nurses. You know, recently we're seeing rates of up to 40 and 50,000 people coming and using that tool online. And for some families, there's been devastating consequences. I've also had a, a call from a colleague this morning about a nurse who's died by suicide. And these are really concerning things. These aren't just statistics. These are actually people's lives that we're losing because of the stress and strain that nurses are under. You can't look after our patients if you don't listen to us. We well need done. Thank you. And a reminder, Lifeline offers 24-hour crisis support. The details are on your screen now.